Well, good afternoon. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, thank you for joining us today. I just have a couple of housekeeping items. My name is Pam Allen. I'm at the Ohio State University at the Newark campus. And for today's session, um, you are allowed to ask questions, but please use the Q&A button uh, if you have a question for your presenters. Your camera and your microphone are gonna be turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, after this session, we in invite you to sign up for more sessions at www.oacac.org. And the recording for this session will be available probably sometime next week at the same website. So with that, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen <laughs> and let the panelists get started. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the Pre-Medical Pathways and Preparing for, for Medical School panel, uh, brought to you by um, Wright State University, The Ohio State University, and the University of Toledo. Um, we're, we are excited to bring a group of academic professionals and admission professionals together to discuss what it's like to prepare for admission, um, undergraduate admission into uh, medical school uh, pre-med programs. Um, we're hoping to answer a lot of questions, but we will certainly have some time at the end and feel free to also add your questions throughout. So we, we welcome you to do that and thank you for joining us. We're going to uh, jump into a few introductions uh, before we move on. So that way you can understand who you're hearing from and, and put our, our, our comments and our expertise into context. So I'd like to start with uh, Dr. Deborah Hendricks and we'll go from there. Thank you, Colin. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Deborah Hendricks and I am the director of the Pre-Health Advising Center at the University of Toledo. And I'm also the mindfulness coach. Hi everybody, my name is Brenda Dynan and I'm an assistant director in the College of Arts and Sciences at The Ohio State University. Um, and my main role in that position is to work with pre-health students across the university. I'm happy you're here. Hello friends, my name is Rob and I am the pre-professional health programs coordinator at Wright State University. And just much like my colleagues, I work with our pre-med, pre-health students across our entire campus. And thanks for being here today. Hello again, good afternoon. I'm Colin Palmer. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admission at the University of Toledo. I bring my greetings from the Ohio State University. I'm Beth Weiser. I am the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions. Hello from Dayton, Ohio and Wright State University. My name is Jen McCamus. I serve as the Director of Admissions. We are so excited that you are here with us today. Thank you all. Before we get into the Q&A session for our panelists, um, what I am going to do is ask uh, Deborah Hendricks to start us off with a mindfulness exercise. Be happy to. I did say that I am a mindfulness coach and I think a good way to start our session off focus on our breath and focus on this moment as a, as a way of settling us in. So I'm actually going to use uh, the Mindful Break Chrome extension that is free and you can add it right to the, your Chrome browser. And we're going to use this to help us. Um, we're going to just take 60 seconds and use our breath as a way to train our mind's ability to stay concentrated and relaxed. So this is just going to be 60 seconds. And during this 60 seconds, we're going to have a little icon to focus on and just breathing in and breathing out. So I'm going to ask that you sit in a position that allows you to be comfortable yet alert. And when you're ready, go ahead and take a deep breath in and breathing out as the circle gets small, breathing in as it gets big. Just taking this moment to settle in to this, this second. 
and this breath. If you notice your mind wandering off, just gently bring it back to the breath, allowing the breath to anchor you into this moment. Just taking 60 seconds for yourself, being fully alive and fully present in this moment. Mindfulness isn't about thinking about the breath, it's just being present and experiencing the breath. Just being fully present in the moment. Thank you so much for taking that time with me. So what we're going to do now is, is go into a roundtable discussion and ask questions of our panelists. Um, our panelists are, are on the advising side of higher education and assisting our students as they navigate their undergraduate um, academic experience. And the reason why you'll see representatives from the University of Toledo, Ohio State and Wright State on the session is because we all not only prepare undergraduates for medical school, but we, each of our institutions also has its own College of Medicine. And so you can continue on from your undergraduate coursework into your professional career as a, as a medical student at each of our institutions. So I'm going to ask a series of questions and each of our panelists are going to lead us in the discussion. At the end of each section, what I'll do is ask if any of the other panelists um, have anything that they'd like to add and then uh, offer some time for some questions and answers at the end. We have quite a few questions to work through. So um, for the audience sake, we will keep our, our answers as brief as we can while also providing some very valuable information. So I'd like to start with Brenda from Ohio State and ask how you would describe medical education in the United States. Sure, so medical education in the US is going to be a four year post baccalaureate program. Um, so all of the medical schools in the US are gonna require that you complete an undergraduate degree, um, whether that is a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts or a professional program. Um, that's not going to matter, um, but they do require that you have a bachelor's degree completed. Um, the medical school programs are going to be a four-year program, and they, they will then continue on with it, additional training in, in residency training. Um, and the, the programs themselves don't require that you know what area of medicine you want to go into at the time you're applying to medical school. So unlike like undergrad when you are selecting a major um, or trying to decide between a few majors um, to ultimately narrow it down to just one or two. Um, for medical school, you would apply to, to medical school um, as a generalist and then receive broad training that becomes a little bit more focused and narrow as you move through the program until ultimately you would then select the residency area that you want to do after completing the undergraduate and post-baccalaureate medical school program. Thank you, Brenda. Um, Rob, from your perspective, why should a student be interested or want to be pre-med? That's a great question. I think uh, just kind of take a little twist on it of really understanding why you want to be pre-med or a doctor or a dentist or what you'll hear throughout today, what we will reference to is pre-health, which encompasses all those areas. And it's really to understand your why will help you clarify your motivations to pursue medical school or other health professional schools. I know from my perspective, and I think our the colleagues on the on today's session will will also agree that when we talk to students, they they have difficulty understanding or are unable to answer that question of why. So it's really important to dig into your story and discover why you're pursuing this path of pre-med. Um, really, when, when you look at it from our perspective, you are simply letting us know that you're pre-health and it helps really start that guide of support systems and pathways that we have available in our schools for you. So the, the reason you wanna understand the why is to really look at it before you really embark on that four-year journey of going to not only your undergrad, but your health professional school too, 
And then also going into the hundreds of thousand dollars, you may go into debt for medical school. And we want to know for the standpoint, why are you on this path? Why are you motivated to do this? What is your interest or your spark to pursue this career? And really what we're not looking for is that you tell us or the medical schools that you love science or you love helping people because that goes without saying simply for the fact you're on this path. What we're looking for is to help you figure out why you're on this journey. And you're gonna be asked this question, why you're motivated, why you're on this pathway. And we really need to find out what has helped you through this because those are gonna be the questions you're asked your entire life on this journey is why medicine and what interest or tell us about yourself to lead towards this. So once you really discover that interest or that career, instead of just choosing from all of them, uh, it's really trying to develop that answer that you're looking for. And, and really it's being able to communicate the events that triggered your curiosity in this field. It's being able to explain what you did after that to learn more about this field. And then ultimately it's helping to explain or solidify your decision on why do you, you wanna choose it and your specific reasons for that. And if you do that, it'll include a lot of personal details to back up your story. And what we're really trying to get away is from you doing the cliche statements. A lot of times students will say, I've always wanted to help people. I've always wanted to be a doctor because that's really gonna be what stand you out from your other peers when you go through this process. Thank you, Rob, I, I appreciate that. And Deborah, how would you describe the application process um, for the designation of pre-med or how, do, how, do you, how would you describe the process um, in, being, in becoming pre-med? You're on mute. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, this is actually kind of complicated um, because every institution um, could have a little bit difference in their policies. Um, for, for the University of Toledo, it's pretty simple. Um, to declare pre-med, you simply choose your academic area of interest on your app, your application, and um, you can either use the, the Toledo app or the Common app, and then you choose the pre-health concentration that you prefer. And for our institution, we have pre-med, pre-dental, and pre-vet, veterinary science. Um, but as I said, this is a little complicated, so I'm going to need my, co my colleagues to voice in how they do it, because some institutions actually have a pre-med major. Um, for us, you can choose any major you would like. Uh, many students choose biology, exercise science, really anything you want and then you choose the pre-med path, that concentration. Um, but again, like I said, I think at this point, maybe my colleagues could chime in and let me know um, how their institutions do it. I know from the standpoint of Wright State, students can, again, major in anything they want. We do not have a pre-med or pre-health major. At Wright State, students typically pick biology, public health, or another science-based major, but we do have students that major in non-science degrees. They're just with us a little bit longer to get through the process. And it is as simple as a student raising their hand at some point, either in the application process with an academic advisor, stopping by my office uh, and filling out a quick five second or five question survey, just asking what they are interested in and we put them in our system. And then that's how they, they connect with our pre-health program here at Wright State. Thank you, Rob. I, I think that um, it's the takeaway from this is it's really a designation um, rather than an actual application process. So declaring yourself as pre-med um, through the application process or, or expressing your interest in pre-med is fairly easy. There might be specific academic requirements to be eligible to have the designation. Some institutions there are some institutions there are not, um, but that's how your, your university knows um, that you're interested in becoming a physician, going to medical school, and, and connecting you with those right courses and those right resources. So um, we have a, another question of what's the difference between, you know, a major and a pre-professional designation, and I think we might have lost Brenda for a moment that was going to field this question. Thankfully, uh, Deborah and Rob both talked about this in their previous answer, and um, I, I'm happy to kind of take this one or, or allow them to or encourage them to add to it, but it's, it, it's, it's been my experience 
that it's fairly uncommon to be able to major in pre-med. And so you're typically going to major in anything of your choice. You can be a history pre-med major. You can be an engineering pre-med. Um, you know, at the University of Toledo, we have a lot of our bioengineering students are pre-med. And what that does is simply connects you with the appropriate resources and it allows the university to know where you are. But as long as you're taking the correct prerequisite courses to be eligible for medical school, which might be those um, higher level science and um, math courses, that's really all that you need to have. Um, there are certainly more popular majors than others, but there's no required major to be designated pre-med. Okay, um, speaking of undergraduate preparation for medical school, I'm, I'm gonna ask Rob to, to tell us, what do you think are the high school courses out there that an undergraduate student could take um, to prepare for a pre-med pathway? Great question. And we've talked a little bit about some of the courses at the undergraduate level or within majors, but we'll want to, and we've talked a little bit outside the courses. There's a few other things in the high school or during high school that we can help prepare, but we'll specifically talk more about um, beginning this journey in high school for you. First and foremost, it's working towards the good grades and academic success in strong grades with strong grades particularly math and science is helpful we at least at Wright State encourage students to take advanced courses could be either college credit plus AP or advanced coursework in their high school specifically in biology chemistry physics stats calculus psychology and English what we'll find, what you'll find out with that subset, even in high school, it's going to prepare you with a knowledge base that those same prerequisites are going to help you um, prepare your undergraduate career to help get into health professional schools. Um, the nice thing about College Credit Plus in the state of Ohio, uh, that's going to also help you get some of those uh, general courses out of the way. And then it'll also help you save a little bit of money towards your medical school or your health professional school. Um, debt as you move forward, but generally it's getting the biology, chemistry, the physics, um, like I said, the math and calculus. What I also want to touch base on briefly is being able to prepare our st your strong study habits now while you're in high school because it's going to be important as an undergraduate and even on the health professional school. And it's really getting up on the college level reading and writing. And it's as simple as it sounds, it's just reading more material. Uh, it could be on content in the program you're in now or in high school, or it could be on the health professions, but it helps improve your vocabulary and help style and grammar. And it's also being comfortable with being a test taker. I know our, it's, that's not our favorite part of our students, but choosing a health career requires a lifelong um, of test taking or lifelong time of test taking. And you'll have to take entrance exams, which we'll get about here in a second. And then even in health professional school and beyond to stay up on the latest technology and certifications and medical advances it is really being a good test taker. So if we can start with the courses now, the st strong study skills, that is gonna help you drive through your undergraduate and even beyond. Thanks, Rob. I, I appreciate that answer. And Deborah, what do you, uh, can you talk to us a little bit about pre-med pathway programs? So maybe some uh, undergraduate programs that directly lead or help support entry into medical school? Sure, Colin. There are several out there. Um, we have one and we call it our Back to MD pathway program. Lots of information on our website about it, but basically what it is, it's specifically for high school students that really have looked into our medical school at the University of College of Medicine, and that would be their top pick. And so they would want to apply to this early acceptance or early um, admission program that would guarantee a student an interview. It doesn't guarantee acceptance, but it guarantees students if they meet all the requirements and they keep up with all of the eligibility requirements um, throughout their years, that, that would guarantee them an interview. And I do know that Case Western and the University of Cincinnati in Ohio also have similar programs. I think the requirements um, are similar, but a little different. But again, checking out those websites, but it's specifically for students that want to go into that specific med school. So by applying to that, 
that early program gets you an interview to that program, but it kind of keeps you from applying to the other ones. Um, so that is uh, one of the paths that you could look into. And there are minimum requirements usually to apply to these, a certain GPA and ACT scores. Um, again, checking out the websites could help. Great, thank you. Um, just doing a time check for our panelists. We've got about, we were about halfway through our questions and we have about 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. Um, Brenda, what do you think are some of the most popular undergraduate majors for those that are pre-med? And, and I'll ask Rob and Deborah from your experience, if there's anything that is maybe specific to your institutions or a unique major that Brenda doesn't have to happen to uh, mention, feel free and add. Yes, sure. And I'm sorry for my un, um, unexpected disappearance. Uh, <laughs> I had a little bit of a technology snafu, which is something we're all living with these days. Um, so at Ohio State, we have a lot of majors to choose from, and we see pre-med and pre-health students majoring in a wide variety of majors. Um, many students, because they really like science so much, they do choose a science major. Um, so majors like biology or molecular genetics or neuroscience, chemistry. So those are among the popular majors. But I also work with students who are majoring in one of our engineering majors. Um, I work with students that are in one of our Fisher College of Business tracks. Um, and I also work with humanities majors. Some, um, I met with a, a Spanish major just a little bit ago earlier today who is pre-med um, and we have English majors and also social science majors um, and we have a, a new major uh, medical anthropology that kind of combines that social science and um, and then an interest in, in medicine and science um, so really we see lots and lots of majors um, but just because of students general interest in the science if they're interested in pursuing a career in medicine um, we tend to see an awful lot of science majors um, just based on the students interest and we just encourage students to think about what are you most interested in studying um, as an academic subject because this is going to be the one time in your life where you can really dig deep into this subject um, and really learn a lot about it. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate that. Rob, from your perspective, um, what do you think that undergraduate course work for pre-med students is like? Uh, I'll get, uh, so want to touch base on selecting the major piece and then we'll slide into that because I think they kind of go hand to hand is it's important for you as a student and to kind of touch base on what Brenda had mentioned that we need you to major in something you're interested in and something that you love and you're going to perform well in because that's going to help a lot with the stress or those long days that get you through. And the schools are looking for students who demonstrated that they can do well, and particularly in the prerequisite courses that you need for your health professional school. And since the, the pre-health coursework is very heavily science-based, and again, using, using the statement of career in health care, care is a health is a career in science. The science is going to be that fundamental blocks for you moving forward. Um, they're they're going to not be cakewalk courses. They're going to be difficult. But if you love what you're doing and understand your motivation and your why behind it, it's going to be easy for you. And regardless of any major you go into, you'll need to complete those prerequisites for the health professional schools. And what those pre-health pre -health prerequisite courses are going to look like are typically a year of biology with a lab, chemistry with a lab, general chemistry, excuse me, phys physics, and then we talked about the math and some of the courses, uh, calculus. Additional courses vary by each health profession and schools may actually have a little different requirements for each one for their school. So it's important for you to start thinking about what schools you might be interested in and working with your pre-health advisor to get that coursework within your major and make sure that you're taking those prerequisites that you need. And we talked about uh, health professional as from our position, we can give you an umbrella and a big picture of you what most health professional schools require. But it's really up to the student to look at those little intricate parts that we might be not so familiar with. Which math course you need to take, do I need to take one organic chemistry or two or a full year of biochemistry? And really that piece is up to you. But again, if you're passionate about what you're doing, you love what you're doing, these, these rigorous courses 
are going to be easier. And really, this is what the health professional schools are looking for in those prerequisites to see if you can handle the rigor of their medical school or veterinarian school programs. Thank you, Rob. Um, Deborah, what uh, co curricular involvement might pre med students participate in or, or investigate um, as part of their undergraduate experience? This is really important. Uh, I think uh, we've already stressed the, the classes and uh, the metrics, and it's, it's vital that students work really hard to get stellar grades, of course, but there's so much more that students need to do in order to grow into a strong candidate for medical school or graduate school. Students should be engaging in activities that build their skills in other areas like service orientation, social interaction, teamwork, leadership, and even communication skills. Activities that will help them should be undergrad research, volunteering on and off campus, and they can even start that now. Shadowing a healthcare practitioner, a doctor, and just really getting into the clinical setting, I know right now could be challenging, um, but even some of our students have, have been shadowing um, in the virtual world. But that really helps solidify too that this is what you want to do. So the more that you can shadow and get out there, that really helps. Um, and our students join student organizations, which also helps with developing their skills. Um, it depends on the institution. Our institution, we have a mentoring program where our uh, juniors and seniors mentor incoming first year and second year students. Um, this also helps them with their communication, their networking, their interpersonal uh, relationship skills. Um, we also partner with our first year med students and we help our first years, second years with getting acclimated, understanding the process. But then with our juniors and seniors, our, our med students will um, walk them through mock interviews, um, help them with uh, mock standardized patient uh, workshops. Um, and these are the things that students really need to do outside of the classroom. Um, these experiences, can help students develop um, and their wisdom and understanding that's far greater than just a textbook. Another important step is preparing for med school is incorporating good study habits. I know Rob mentioned this earlier, but the sooner that you can start developing good study habits. So for us, we partner with our career center and our success coaches. We also really stress in our um, office um, really working on effective stress management skills early on. You're going to need this through med school, through the rest of your life as a professional and in and out of healthcare. Um, and making proper steps now to build self care habits as part of your lifestyle. Um, so, those are tips I would say. And you can chime in from our, my colleagues, though. But I think for many med schools, most med schools and professional schools, they're looking holistically at our students and they wanna make sure they're a strong candidate um, in and outside of the classroom. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Brenda, I think we all know that um, we're here to talk about pre-med, but there are a lot of other careers in the health professions and a lot of different pathways and opportunities for our students and, and many of those pathways can be pursued at our institutions. So would you wanna maybe touch briefly on what those opportunities might be and some of the academic majors associated with that? Yeah, sure. So um, a lot of times students enter into their undergrad experience with one idea of their career and that changes over time. Um, and it's not always, and in fact, it's usually rarely because they just can't do it, um, that they're not doing well in the courses. A lot of times they discover interests um, that are outside of their original career plan. And the good news is that, especially if you're staying within the health professions, the types of preparation that you will need to do both in the classroom and outside the classroom is really, really similar. So taking science courses is gonna be something that you would need to do for any of the health professions areas. Getting involved in healthcare activities like volunteering, um, student organizations, developing communication and leadership skills, um, working with people in general is gonna be really, really beneficial. A lot of times students are um, introduced to other health professions through their volunteer activities, that they are volunteering in a hospital 
or a clinic setting, and they're able to observe the different healthcare practitioners um, that are at work around them. And so this is one way to kind of be able to explore all of the options within um, the healthcare area. Um, another way, if you're just kind of interested in what else is out there, there's a really great website called explorehealthcareers.org. Um, it's a great website. It just can tell you all sorts of um, different health careers, what preparation is required, how many years of school you would need for this. Um, and as pre-health advisors, we're definitely having these conversations with students um, on a regular basis. Uh, you know, students will be checking in with us about how, you know, how they're progressing along their path. Um, but then also, you know, we're initiating conversations about, you know, how their interests may potentially be shifting and how they can explore those other interests. So, you know, we're not um, uh, sticking to just that one one area. We are very much generalist as far as how we are um, advising the students. We're prepared to talk to students about these various areas of the health professions. Um, and at, at institutions, there are opportunities, whether it's Ohio State, Wright State, or University of Toledo, there are opportunities to get involved with activities that are related to those other health professions as well. Thank you for that. I think that was that was very helpful. Um, Rob, coming back to you, we're going to move into the next section, which is talking about not applying for undergraduate admission towards your baccalaureate degree, but we want to hear from you a little bit about what it's like applying to medical school. So sure. can you just give us a general idea of what that timeline looks like? Yeah, most certainly. So health professional applications are submitted 12 to 15 months before you desire to go to med school or health, veterinarian school or, or any of the health professional schools. So depending on your interest, most of the time your applications will be or are submitted somewhere May, June or July of this year for next year to kind of give you an example. So students that applied or are applying this year are going to go next fall. So even though the application kind of give you an idea submitted a year in advance the process starting to collect all your information for your credentials or adding your credentials to your portfolio to your application really starts around christmas so two christmases before and it's really getting ready to gather your live recommendations write your personal statement take your entrance exam typically students will take their entrance exam uh, in that 12 to 15 month, 16, 18 month process. So for our students applying to medical school who are wanting to go next year, they took their MCAT uh, sometime in February, March, April, May of this year. So really it's, um, we wanna also encourage you to submit early in the process. So that's why we're telling you now, cause we do have students who come in late to the application cycle. And we really want you to apply early in the process because you have um, your, your application is more competitive at that point because all the seats are open. So rolling admissions occurs in health professional schools. So those seats start being uh, filled up by students. And so we don't wanna wait till August or uh, September, October because a lot of those seats have gone. So again, it's really making sure that you know what your health professional school requires because some of their requirements vary from school to school. Um, but in general, it takes a year to two years in advance to really start the process to just submit it. And then that application process, it, we're getting into September and we're starting interviews for our students and they'll find out here in the next couple of months if they're gonna be able to go to medical school in fall of 21. Thank you, Rob, I appreciate that. Deborah. what is the application process like? So I think we were aware of maybe this test called the MCAT and there are some, maybe some interviews involved. What, what's the application process typically look like? I think Rob actually really, uh, really covered it. The MCAT is the medical college admission test. He talked about that as well. Students start studying for that early on before they apply. Four to six months to prepare. Um, the courses that they need to have covered before they take the MCAT usually are biology uh, one and two, chemistry one and two, O chem, uh, semester one, biochem, physics one and two, or math or writing, psych and social. Uh, the courses that are 
the admission requirements for, for most med schools. And these will be the required classes to prepare for the MCAT. And uh, usually it, it's that six to nine month time period before they apply. And so that's a big piece of it. Once the application is done, as Rob talked about, um, there's some, some more pieces to it. There's a secondary applications and then the interviews start, which um, you know, the campuses right now are helping their students prepare for those. And um, you know, after the, the interviews happen, the, right now they're going to be, most interviews will be online, but uh, they used to be face-to-face. -face. They'll go back to that, I'm sure. Um, and then after the interviews and acceptance, then students would matriculate and go into med school um, that following fall. And that's pretty much the, the big picture as Rob was talking about. And the MCAT is, is similar to the ACT and SAT, but really geared towards medical school with the sciences and uh, you know, the, the courses that will adequately prepare them for the rigors of med medical school. Great. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate it. Um, before we move into the last question, I want to say this would be a great time to submit questions to the chat. Um, so as we, as Brenda answers this last question for us, feel free and pose anything. Remember you have admissions professionals here and pre-health advising professionals. So if you have questions that span both of those things, we, we are here to help you with that. So um, I know we, we've received, we have received one question already about the duration of medical school. So we will definitely get to that. Uh, but Brenda, what resources are available to help students prepare for the application process for medical school? Yes, so your best resource is going to be your pre-health advisor. Um, and so you definitely have a pre-health advisor who can help you through this. So I think my colleagues and I, um, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with um, potential applicants uh, to just go over the application process um, and to talk about how they're going to um, describe their experiences in a way that really makes them shine in the application process. Um, some other things that we do um, at Ohio State and I think are kind of pretty common types of, of uh, preparation assistance is we do workshops for students who will be applying to medical school and other health professions areas. So we do a, an MCAT overview. What is the MCAT? How do I prepare for it? What do I need to do? When do I register for it? Um, we do how to prepare for interview workshops and mock interviews with our students. Um, we do a personal statement workshop as as well so you can get some really specific feedback um, on your personal statement um, and we do an application overview workshop as well so um, in the past we've done those in person um, current conditions require that we do them virtually um, but it's still the same information um, and you can just uh, participate in in those opportunities from the comfort of your dorm room or um, or your home um, but a lot of the resources um, are really coming through the pre-health advising, that one-on-one -on -one advising and having one-on-one -on -one conversations with the pre-health advisor. So I would say, um, you know, wherever you end up going for undergrad, it is really important to connect to the pre-health advising office, to the pre-health advisors who are there to help you. Um, and the earlier you connect, the, the stronger foundation you have and the better prepared you will be for every step of this process. And you won't be taken by surprise um, by any of the requirements or the um, deadlines or um, anything else that will be required for the application process. Thank you, Brenda, and I think that was well timed. I actually um, put our contact information up on the for the presentation while you mentioned the plug of connecting with your pre health advisor. One thing I wanted to add to that I, I mentioned earlier on you, you see the panelists up here today. Uh, because each of our institutions has a medical school and a, and a college of medicine. I think it's only fair that I say that liberal arts colleges and other colleges and universities out there that do not have their own medical schools often have pre-health advisors. So um, there, there are a lot of resources out there, even at institutions that do not have their own colleges of medicine or their own hospitals, um, for example, that can still provide you with a lot of these same great resources. 
I think this session has given you some really inside baseball kinds of insights to and good for you all to be thinking about that early. We do have a few questions in the last five minutes of our session to wrap up and we'll start with the one that Colin already posed. How long is medical school? Brenda, do you want to take that one? Yes, sure, absolutely. Medical school is typically a four-year program. Um, the, there are some special opportunities that might be um, kind of a fast track. Um, OSU College of Medicine has a, a special program that's a three-year program, the primary care track. Um, so it's a very small program. But in general, medical school is going to be four years. And then after that, that residency training um, will vary from, you know, two or three years up to, you know, six or seven years, depending on the specialization um, and the specialized training that you would require. Um, but med school itself is going to be a four year program. And, and Rob, I'm going to turn to you for this next question. We know that medical school can be competitive. So what kind of grades do you, does a student have to have in order to apply and be a competitive candidate for med school? What a great question. And it's, it's, it's an easy one, but a difficult one, difficult one at the same time. For the most part, for health professional schools, depending on what, what program you want to go into, is really to shoot for a 3.5 to a 3.7. And there's going to be your biology, chemistry, physics, and math GPA, which is typically your prereq prerequisites your health professional schools are going to look at, and then your cumulative GPA, and those are going to be want to be in the same framework of the, the strength of your GPA. What I would caution students for or on is when you look at the websites, there is a vast difference between minimum ex minimum requirements for the health professional schools and the average acceptance of their incoming class. So what you'll see, medical schools for prime example are typically a 3.0 minimum GPA. That is just to get your file on someone's desk to get reviewed compared to, and it's a first checkpoint compared to the students they're accepting are between a 3.5 and 3.7. So we want to shoot on that higher end and have the other, the other parts of the application to go with that as well to really be a competitive applicant. Rob, as a follow-up, Will grades in high school be considered in the medical school review? If as long as they, if they're college credit plus, yes. If you've taken them in your high school and they were not for college credit, the beautiful part about moving from high school to college is that all disappears. And if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So thank goodness for that piece of paper disappearing. Um, but if you take college credit, that, that coursework lives with you as long as any other degree that you achieve uh, past high school. Great, thanks. And we know that people who are going to medical school may also have other interests. And so let's say a student wants to earn a master's degree in addition to going to medical school. Deborah, do you wanna provide some guidance on that? When would be the right time for them to think about a master's and medical school? Sure. We have several students that choose to do that. They choose intentionally to take a gap year. Um, this is an intentional year to strengthen areas of their application that maybe they haven't had to work on, they haven't had time to work on in their undergrad path. Um, they were worried working more on their metrics and getting their grades and their MCAT score, but maybe they lacked some other areas or some of the sciences they weren't as strong in. Um, so we have students that will go into a master's of science and biological sciences and medical sciences. That's, this is a popular one, or some students are really interested in a master's in public health. Um, but usually that's decided on towards, you know, maybe their junior, senior year. They're really starting to understand the path to med school and where their interest lies. So that's something that they could talk with their um, pre-health advisor about and, uh, and options then. I'd also like to add to that, um, and this is not incredibly unique to the University of Toledo, but the great thing in, a, in attending one of our institutions is, um, you know, we have a law school, so we actually offer a joint uh, MD-JD, so you can do a, 
become a lawyer and a doctor all at the same time. Um, we have an MD, MBA, so you could do a master's in business administration at the same time you become a physician. So there are things that you can also do um, at the same time and maybe not even before or after. And we have time to uh, ask this one last question. Along the same lines of courses in high school, what about courses being taken at a community college, like through CCP? If those are some prerequisite courses, are we at a, are students at a disadvantage if they take those courses through CCP? Brenda, do you want to answer that one for us? Sure, absolutely. This is something that we see a lot um, and medical schools see this a lot. And um, this is not going to pose a problem. It's not going to be a, a disadvantage to you in the application process. Um, what we advise students who are planning to go to medical school or any of the health professions is to try to take most of their prerequisites at a four year institution. Um, but if you're doing, you know, one or two biology courses through CCP um, in high school, and then you're going to do your chemistry and organic chemistry um, at a four year institution, that won't be a problem whatsoever. Um, and so doing community college credits um, through CCP um, is absolutely fine. Medical schools will accept those credits. Um, there's uh, there's, I don't, I'm not aware of any exceptions to that. And certainly the Ohio medical schools will accept those. You all have asked some great questions and I know that we uh, could continue this conversation. Our time has come to an end and we're so thankful for the experts, panelists who joined us today. And thank you so much for sharing that knowledge. It's great to be able to get that first-hand experience. So to wrap up, we'll turn it back over. Oh, thank you so much for all of the excellent information that was given today by our panelists. And thank you students and families for joining us. Uh, you'll get a quick survey that only has four questions after we end this session today. Again, you can sign up for more sessions at www.oacac.org and the recording should be available next week. Thank you again. Take care.